Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Actually, I should say Tuesday's second edition of Cracking the Cryptic uh, because I released a bonus video earlier on today of me solving a cryptic crossword. Um, and the crossword was set by somebody called Steve Pemberton. And I know many of you will know who Steve Pemberton is, but in the UK, he is a very famous writer and or star of uh, a show called Inside Number Nine. He was a member of a show also called A League of, League of Gentlemen, uh, which is a little bit older. Um, but yeah, he, he it turns out he's a cryptic crossword setter and he released a crossword yesterday on Twitter. So I thought, well, we've got to have a go at it. So there is a video. Um, I think I released it about 10 o'clock this morning um, on the channel. If you are interested in such things. Um, uh, today's puzzle main video puzzle is this puzzle, which is by Samantha Mukherjee from India. Uh, Samantha's appeared on the channel a few times before, and I've always enjoyed his puzzles, as have you guys. Uh, he always gets a lot of very positive feedback. Um, and you can see this is a very colorful op offering. So I'll tell you the rules in a moment. A couple of other things to mention first. Um, over on Patreon, uh, if you're a supporter of the channel on Patreon, I've just released um, Mark's solve of a recent listener crossword. So um, these solves are very popular for those of you who are interested in advanced cryptic crossword solving. Um, so do check it out if, if, that's your, if that's your bag. And also, uh, free on Patreon, I've released um, two puzzles by the brilliant constructor, uh, Prasanna Sashadri. Um, now, the, the sort of genesis of these puzzles was last month's Discord competition, which was featured around the whole, uh, well, the subject of playing cards. And Prasanna was the only one who uh, created puzzles that didn't use a sort of standard deck of playing cards, but used the card games he had he had at, at home. And they are very colourful, very interesting puzzles. And looking at some of the comments on Discord, I think they are worthy of a wider audience. So if, if you're interested in such things, do check them out. As I say, they're completely free and they are available on Patreon. The only thing to note is in the PDF files, the third page on each PDF file has the solution. So do try not to look at that too quickly. Um, now, anything else to mention? I don't think so. I think we can just get on to Samantha's puzzle. He calls this puzzle 16 cups of tea. And that is because presumably there are 16 T-shaped uh, well, I, I'll take his word for it. That, that's probably right. Yes, there are. In fact, I've just counted them. There are 16 T-shapes in the grid, which is rather nice. Um, and um, what I've done, I've created this in our software in a way that's sort of as faithful as possible to the version he sent to us, which was, you know, had lots of colors in it. Um, but I know some of you are sensible uh, to the chromatic choices that I make. Um, so I will try to remember... Uh, under the video to include an, an uncolored version. So if you don't want the version with colors, that, that should be available to you. Obviously, if you want to play the puzzle, as always on Cracking the Cryptic, you click on the link under the video. Now, what are the rules? We've got killer Sudoku rules apply, which means that obviously these cages need to add up to the digit in the top left hand corner or whatever we put in the cages needs to add up to this 27. In this case, you can't repeat a digit in a cage. Uh, there are little killer Sudoku clues. You can see we've got four of those. So that these the way these work is that the diagonals that the arrows point at have to sum up to eight in this case, eight in this case, seven in this case. Now, actually, ordinarily in a little killer Sudoku, you can repeat digits along the diagonal, but obviously you can't here because all these diagonals are pointing just at a single box and you can't repeat a digit in a box. Normal Sudoku rules are applying as well. And other than that, we've just got two inequality signs in the grid. So the inequality signs work, the arrow effectively points to the smaller of the two digits. So this cell has to be lower than that one. This one has to be lower than that one. That's all there is to it. So do have a go. As I say, click on the link or links under the video to play. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and let us get cracking. How do we do this though? We've got... Okay. All right. Well, so I'm looking at these cages and none of these uh, four cell cages are particularly, you know, a particular. I know there must be a one in a 12 cage of four cells. Uh, I know there must be a nine in a, uh, a four cell of 27. So I suppose I could Let's label these up and see if that tells me anything. But 
I don't think it's going to. I mean, my eyes are drawn, and I'm sure yours are too, to these open cells on the diagonal. So presumably, we have to do some sort of mega geometric trick to get started. I'm actually having a few pangs of anxiety when I see these inequality signs after that A helped puzzle the other day, but hopefully this won't be as complicated as that was. Otherwise, this will be a very long video. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and work out the value of the white squares. So how can we do that? Well, we can use the rule of 45. So I know that every single 3x3 three three box in a Sudoku, once you've filled it, filled it in, will contain the digits 1 to 9. What, do the, what does 1 to 9 add up to? If you add up all of them up, you get 45. Now that means if we add up the entire Sudoku grid, we get 9 lots of 45 which is 405. Now, if I therefore add up all of the colored squares and deduct it from 405, I will get the values of the diagonals. So let us see what that tells us. So how is, that? is there a quick way of doing this? Probably not. There's a few 25s sprinkled around the grid. I'll start with those, I think. So that gives me 125 straight off the bat. So 151, 158, 178, 186, 196. Ah, okay, so we get 196 from the reds. If I add two lots of 12 together, that's 24. So that's 220, 240, 254. So 254, and I haven't yet done the greens. Um, so 261, 281, 288, 308, uh, 312. 332. Ah, okay, so we get 355 if I haven't made a mistake. So 405 minus 355 is 50. Now, that means nothing to me, I have to say. So we now know that these white squares, which I'm turning yellow, add up to 50. So, so if we think, let's have a think about this. So the smallest I could make these cells, these yellow cells, if I put one, two, and three into each of these yellow squares, because obviously I can't repeat a digit in a box, so the minimum I could make those three squares add up to would be six. I'd have four lots of six, that's 24, and then I'd have a five cell region here which I could make add up to 15 if I made all of these digits different they would be one two three four and five which adds up to 15 so I the absolute minimum I can make these yellow squares therefore is 24 plus 15 which is 39 which is not equal to 50 right so there's something more complicated going on here Oh, okay, so I'm now wondering if I have to combine all of that with these little killer clues. Holy moly. Um, right, how are we going to do this? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's a clever way of doing this. So I've got 50... So, ah, so 8 plus 8 plus 7 plus 9 is another 32. So 82. But, ah, but the problem here is, you could, the, the problem with adding all of the little killer clues in is I'm double counting certain squares because this square, these four squares here, are counted both in the uh, trick I did with the 405 minus the 355, but also these little killer clues are also counting these squares. So these four squares are counted twice in my total of 82. Ah, okay, so... Ah, okay, so if we think... Let's just have a look at this box for a moment. If I include the little killer, the minimum... I could make this sort of cross shape add up to is 15. We've already looked at that in the middle box. 
So the minimum I can make all of these cells add up to is five lots of 15, which is 75. And what have I got? I've got, I've got 50 plus 32, I've got 82. Right, so the minimum the absolute minimum you can make those crosses add up to is 75. We have to get our crosses. Ah, no, we haven't got 82. We've got 82 less these squares. Ah, now I'm getting somewhere. I'm starting to understand. Sorry. Now, so that is interesting because if I have to deduct those four squares from 82, I'm going to get very close to 75 because I can't put ones in all, all those four squares. That won't work because these ones will break the rules of Sudoku. So the best, the best I'll do, I could have ones opposite each other and then twos, that's the minimum. So six minus 82 is 76. So there is only one degree of freedom now. That is right. We are now starting to get a meaningful restriction. So in case I've done that a bit quickly, let me just go over that again. What I've worked out is that if I was to draw a cross into each of these corner squares like this and put the bare minimum into them, then in each of the corners, the, these crosses would have the digits 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in them. They would each add up to 15 and 5 lots of 15, if I include the middle, is 75. But I know in this particular puzzle, these crosses don't, well they might add up to 75 I suppose, but they from the geometry that we've got, we've been able to establish that the yellow squares in the grid sum up to 82 minus those four squares. So we've got to somehow... So, ah, okay, now look, that is interesting here. That is interesting here with the seven clue because the seven clue must be one, two, and four. But I can't put four into this square. I can't put four into this square because if I do, I can't make these three squares add up to, to only three. They would have to add up to three because 82 minus seven is 75. If I go 82 minus 8, it's impossible to make the totals work. So this square, if it's a 4, I'd have to put three ones into these three squares. That doesn't work. Good grief. So this is not 4. This is 1 or 2. And in fact, you can't put 4 in those squares. So these squares are 1, 2 and 3. And if there is a 3, there can't be a 2, there can't be two 3s. Because if there were two threes, the minimum I could put into the other two squares would be one each, and that would make eight, which is too large. So if there is a three, there is only one three. Now, nine, the seven, the eight, the eights, you've got two eights, there's going to have to be a one along each of these uh, diagonals because you can't make eight in three cells with different digits without using a one it's either got to be one two five or one three four now um, okay so I feel I'm right on the cusp of understanding this puzzle but I still haven't quite figured out Ah, 12, 12 needs a 2, it's, I said it needed a 1, it needs a 2 as well. Now this is interesting, this is interesting because we're going to be able to get this square to be a 3 because, I've just labelled both 12, if we try not to include a 2 in this cage, 
we would add 3, 4 and 5. They would be the minimum we could use to 1. Now 3, 4 and 5 on their own add up to 12. So this t and this t have to have a 1 and a 2 in them. But this square is a 1 or a 2 now. So how hopefully you can see I can't put 1 and 2 into this square. That would be impossible. So I can put one of them here. In fact, there must be exactly one of them there because I can't put one and two into this th these three cells or this cell would break. So there has to be a one or a two in these cells here. There's a one or a two in that cell. There can't possibly be another one and two in that cell. That is a three. Therefore, that's not a three. And I can't have, an I can't have another three because if I do... I break the total, so that's not a 3. So now I've got 82 minus 3, so I've now got 79. These three cells have to add up. Yeah, these three cells have to add up to no more than 4. So I've got to, they've got to be two ones and a 2, and the only way that works, I can't put a 1 there, because I can't then put another 1 in. These are both 1. This is a 2, this must be 1 and 5 to add up to 8, and we, we're off. We are, oh, no, we can't do that one yet. Um, we can rule out the ones in the corners here. This must be a 1 in the 12 cage. And this, oh, there's no 3 in this 12 cage. So this has got to be 2, 4, 5, hasn't it? Because I need... Once I've put the 2 in there, I've, I need to make 2 cells add up to a 9, but I can't use 1, 8 or 2, 7, and I can't use 3, 6, so it must be 4, 5. This one can't be a 2 because this one has to be greater than that one. 1 must be here by exactly the same logic that the ones here were mirrored. So this must be 2, 4, 5 as well because of the three um, and uh, yes this is good this nine this nine total can't include a one because of the ones we've already found in the grid so the only way of making nine in three cells uh, without using one is with two three and four we know where the three is we don't know where the the, the um, twos and fours are now, what I need to do now, of course, is to note that as we've got 7 here, we are forced to make every cross add up to 15. So I'm going to be able to do some pencil marking here. These two squares have got to be 3 and 4. These, uh, there's no restriction up there. That's a bit annoying. Um, uh, but that one that one can't be a 2 because that's in a 27 cage if you put a 2 in the other three cells would have to add to 25 that's not going to work uh, 7 8 and 9 add to 24 these are ah, now where do we put the one in this square these ones push the one up here this has got to be a 5 There's got to be a 5 in one of those two squares by Sudoku now. And in this, oh, and in fact in this box I haven't placed my 5 yet. So the 5 must be in the corner, it can't be anywhere else. This has got to be a 3. That, that means that square's a 4. This square's got to be a 3. No 3's over here. No 4's here. And after that brutal beginning, we're suddenly beginning to make a little bit of progress. Um, okay, now, how do we make more progress? That's what we're after now. Um, three, look, has to sit in the 20 cage. Oh, four up there. Four is also in the twenty cage. Four, seven, 
2 must be in the 24 cage. Five, 5. Ah, now this is going to be nice. Look. So now we've got 5, 3, 4 and 5 into those 3 squares. Which makes them a 3, 4, 5 triple. And this square must be the balance, which is 8. So 12, obviously, well, 20 minus 12 gives 8. Uh, 4 here gives us the 4 and the 2 over this side. 4 can now only go, look, in one position in this box. It's got to go there. The 5 fixes this as a 2. Are we going to be able to finish? Oh, yes, we are. The 5. There we go. 5 and 3. So now we've done all of these... Um, crosses. We fig figure them all out. Oh, apart from the middle cross, I forgot about that one. So let's put that one in. Right, so that's not one. Oh. Oh, the middle cross hasn't got much pointing at it at all. Unless I'm missing something. Um, no, well, I can't see. Uh, ones, though, have to be in one of those three squares, but this square's got to be bigger than that square, so the one must be in one of those two positions. Let's see if there's some Sudoku we can figure out. So fives have got to live in the 14 cage. Th ah, threes have got to live in the 14 cage. And that's enough. So now how do we make 14, given we can't include a one? It's got to be two, three, four, and five. So again, we can see the 2 is getting shoved into this square because the 3, 4, and 5 are getting pushed into the um, these three squares by Sudoku. So the 2 rules the 2 out from that one and that one. 4, 5 pair gives us a 2 here. Rule the 2 out of these squares in the middle. It's bizarre. We've actually... We've been incredibly good at uh, pencil marking all of these 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s and 5s but I think we're going to need some help now 3 has to live in this ah, now that's interesting 3 has to live in the 27 cage so the 27 cage once it's got a 3 in it it's going to have to be 3, 7, 8 and 9 so it doesn't have a 6 in it ah, it's got an 8 in it so the 8 must be either here or here and there must be a 7 in it. So the 6 must be in one of those two positions in box 4. And I should probably pencil mark this cage, I think. Okay. This, this 27 cage has a 5 in it, so these squares have got to add up to 22 without using 5, so they are 6, 7 and 9, which means there's an 8 in one of those two cages, or positions. So, ah, now in fact we've got the same thing going on here, that 2, these three squares have got to add up to 23, so they've got to be 6, 8 and 9. We know this is not 8 because the 8's in one of those two positions in this box. So this is 6 or 9. One of these two is 8. Ah, not quite. One. Two. One's got to be in one of those two squares, look. And one can't be in the red square. Oh, well, it can't be in this red square because uh, that will break this cage total. Um, I mean, it's absolutely broken if we put the one in there as well. So the one must go here. These two squares have got to add up to 15. Uh, but there are two ways, obviously, of doing that with 6, 9 and 7, 8 as the options. One gets ruled out of those two squares though, so let's tidy that up. Three, ah, three has got to be in this 27 cage as well. Okay, sorry. So this 27 cage is also three, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, 
but we know that's not the 3 because these squares in the middle in fact have to be 6, 7, 8 and 9 because we've got the 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in the, in the cross shape. So this can't be an 8 by Sudoku because the 8 must be in one of those two squares. Um, okay. So there must be one of these cages, I think, that must... Ah, that one. That can't be a 2, but this has got a 1 in it. It adds to 25. So we know that the other squares in here have got to be 7, 8, and 9. That plonks a 6 into one of those two squares where it joins a 5, look. That's interesting because 6 and 5 is 11. The balance of the, the two cells left over in this cage have to add up to 15 without repeating the 6. So this is 6, 7 and 8 and the 8 here tells us that that's an 8, that's a 6, that's a 7. Okay, now is this the breakthrough? Maybe... 6 here must... Oh no, it doesn't break it. it doesn't, well, it doesn't break through. It gives us a few pencil marks that we can remove. We can get rid of the 8s from there. The 8 gets shoved into this square. 7, 9 pair in row 2 fixes that that one is an 8. Uh, this 25 cage, that needs 6, 8 and 9. So there's a 7 in the 20, this 25 cage. I don't think that's quite enough to disambiguate it. Um, oh, come on, I must, I must be a 9, look. 9's got to go there because it's the only digit we've not placed in column 9. So that's good. That fixes that that's a 6. We know those two had to add up to 15. So 6 now lives in the 24 cage, which means it doesn't live in this cell. That creates a 7-9 pair in the middle, which gives us... Yes, that's good. That gives us an 8 there and a 6 there. We can remove 8 from the rest of this box. Where does 6 go in box 2 now? It can only go here because it can't repeat in this cage. That means we get... This square is a 6, this square is a 9. Remove 9 from all of those squares, but we know the 27 cage needs a 9, so we can fix a bit more. These two squares have got to be 6 and 7. Well, if that's a 7, it rules a 7 out of box 7, so it can't be. This has got to be the 6, this has got to be the 7. Uh, and we should be able to do some maths to get the final digit here. Look, we've got 17. We need an 8 here to make that work. I think I think we've finished the puzzle. And I don't want to speak too soon. But it does feel like, because we've made such good progress now with the, the red cells, we ought to be able to get there. Um, if we look here, we've got 12, which means these two squares have got to add up to 13 without using... Um, four eight or five uh sorry five eight or four nine so these have got to be six and seven yeah okay which i could have got just by filling this box in obviously try and do things the least efficient way simon um okay so we've got to place a nine in this one which must go here we've got to place a six in there let's just check the totals working 24 that's lovely And we ought to, I think, be able to... Yeah, what have we got to put in here? We need a 9 in one of those squares. Uh, that gives us 16. I can't actually read what that says, which isn't helpful. 16. Ah, we need a 7 as well. That's not 9. Uh, that's, not, that's not 1 either. So we get this down to a 1, 9 pair, which the 1 down here fixes. So we go 1, 9, 9 here, 7 here, 3 here. Tidy up the middle. Ah, still not quite done. Um, what else? I must be missing something. Oh, that can't be a... 
So there's now a 4-5 pair here, which fixes that that is a 1. 3-4-5 across there, so this is a 2. That's not a 2, that creates a 2 here. Oh look, I wonder if it's going to be this. Look at this. Is this going to disambiguate the whole of the sort of four fives around the grid? This seven is greater than this one. That looks fine. We, should, we must be able to get this. Yeah, the eight must go there. The seven must go here. The three must go here. This must be it. Yeah, this is, look what's going to happen at the end here. This is, this is going to be brilliant. I'm j I, I need to get to this point because I'm excited about it. There we go. So have a look at this. I think this, in the absence of this uh, inequality sign, we would have a deadly pattern. Um, and we couldn't disambiguate the fours and the fives. But given that this has to be the five, I think we can disambiguate. And let's see if this goes all the way round. It's going to go all the way round. Absolutely brilliant. There you go. That's how to solve Samantha's puzzle. A really, really gorgeous idea. And again, this sort of, we see this a few times and the constructors are finding ever more intricate ways to hide um, these sort of opening digits. And the geometry at the start of that was really a joy. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.